Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, that's a hard time slot to talk to you because you are just coming back from lunch. So that's the natural moment of the day where you have a tendency to sleep. So my job for the next hour or so, for the next 50 minutes is to keep you awake. Uh, I hope I'll manage to do that. I'll try to make that a bit uh, interactive as well. Uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Sebastian. I'm AWS developer evangelist, uh, taking over the, the role in, in France. Uh, so if you are attending uh, meetups or conference in France in the coming months, you might see me uh, a bit more also uh, online as well. You can find me online on Twitter at uh, sebsto, S-E-B-S-T-O. And today, I'm going to talk to you about a new service uh, that AWS launched one year ago called AWS AppSync. It's a GraphQL uh, service. Um, and I will show you how to prototype an API using AppSync, how to integrate with a mobile application. I have a couple of demos with Android and iOS here. Let's pray the demo got that everything goes uh, well. I, I blew up the demo 20 minutes ago. I click on the delete button that I should not click and uh, to rebuild it. So let, let, let's hope it's, it, it will work. So what is AppSync, AWS AppSync? Uh, it's a managed serverless GraphQL service. So that's a lot of word in one single sentence, manage serverless GraphQL service. So it's serverless. First, you don't need to manage your own server. You don't need to create your, your own virtual infrastructure, virtual machine, EC2 instance, if you know about uh, AWS. Uh, we do that for you, and we are going to scale that for you. So, and we are going to make that highly available for you. So um, if you have three requests per hour or one million of requests per hour, we, AWS, are going to scale the infrastructure for you. And we design that infrastructure to be highly available as well in the unlikely case an unfortunate event would happen on your virtual machine, we will restart that automatically. So the virtual machine is totally hidden for you. You don't need to manage it. And that's why we say it's a managed serverless um, a GraphQL server. You know that if, if you are implementing GraphQL API today, you probably spin up a virtual machine somewhere on Google, Microsoft. AWS, then you need to install an operating system, then you need to install the GraphQL server, like Apollo, for example, Apollo Server, and it's your responsibility to maintain all that, to patch the operating system, to configure the networking part, to configure the scalability, to configure the, the high availability. That's the part we want to remove from you. We, we do that because everyone has to do it anyway. If you are in finance, insurance, public sector, healthcare, whatever, that's undifferentiated heavy lifting. That's the plumbery, that's the cable, and we, we do that for you. So it's a GraphQL server that you can use without a, um, a server, without a virtual machine that allows you to connect you to, to various uh, data sources in the cloud. Of course, we, we connect to our own uh, database, like DynamoDB. I will talk a bit more about DynamoDB later, but it's a NoSQL server from, from um, AWS. You can connect to Elastic Cache, you can connect to existing REST API, or you can connect to code, any type of code, we call that a Lambda function. It's a piece of code that you can run in the cloud. And from there, you can connect to whatever else, uh, because it's, it's a bridge to, to whatever else an API that you, you can call. So that's the server side of AppSync. But AppSync is not only on the server side, AppSync is also on the client side. On the client side, we do provide an SDK for JavaScript so that you can embed that in your web application with Vue or uh, Angular, for example, or in mobile application, iOS with Swift or Objective-C or um, Android with um, Java and Kotlin. And the SDK does a couple of magic things for you automatically so that you don't need to, to do it. The SDK takes care of both local cache so that we can download data from, from the GraphQL API and have a local cache. The SDK manages the network connection. You know that in the mobile world, sometimes you lose the 4G connection because you are entering into the metro. But as a customer, even when I'm in the metro, I want to continue to be able to update uh, my data or read my data. So the SDK will detect that automatically and cache transaction locally inside the local database. And whenever the network connection will come back, it will push the change uh, uh, to the server. And of course, if many people are doing that at the same time, you might have conflict of data on the server, two people updating the same piece of data at the same time. So we have a conflict resolution mechanism, uh, which is uh, built in as well. You can do conflict resolution on the client side or on the, the, the server side. And all that integrates with uh, enterprise scale security feature. Uh, for those of you using AWS already, you probably heard about IAM, Identity and Access Manager, which is the 
the service that allows you to manage your user and your permission on AWS. AppSync is integrated with that, with a service called Cognito, and uh, you can um, authenticate your, your uh, API user uh, based on AWS policies or single sign-on with AWS, and we do support OpenID, OAuth, and Samuel. So basically, you can have a login with Google, login with Amazon, login with Twitter, GitHub, whatever, and reuse the O token, the JWT token, in the GraphQL server side. So that's a high-level promise of um, uh, AppSync. So let's try to, to see into uh, a more detail exactly how it works. Um, I guess in this track, most of you know about GraphQL, but I have the mandatory three slides that recap what is uh, GraphQL, just in case someone is new uh, today to, to uh, GraphQL and didn't attend any talk during these two days of, of conference uh, neither. Uh, but uh, the idea of GraphQL basically is to provide you just the right amount of data at the, at the right moment. With REST, you have one URI, one uh, proper resource. If you want to query all the posts for a blog, for example, you just call one URI, you have the list of posts. If you want the details for one specific post, you need to call another URI and retrieve piece of information like that. Uh, REST is not so good to merge things and like to get all the comments for one single post or to get uh, all the posts by one author, you need to duplicate your URI to, to do that, which makes things a bit uh, more uh, complicated. I forgot the slide was animated, so I need to click a lot of time on that slide. With GraphQL, the, the client application developer can just query the right amount of data they need to the um, GraphQL server, in our case, AppSync, that will collect the data from different backends, aggregate them, and just return in one single call. Three main concepts that I will reuse during the whole uh, demo. Uh, first, you model your data with types and the, the queries and the mutations or the, the change you, you want uh, to do. Uh, the, the client can request a specific query and request specific data to be back from that query, and usually the client receives back some kind of uh, JSON. So three concepts here, the, the schema, which is uh, the, the, the model of your application and the operation that you can do on these, on these data, the queries in the middle that is used by the client, iOS or a web client or Android client, and the result which is in uh, JSON. Another important aspect of GraphQL is the concept of subscription. So queries and mutation, I think everybody understands it. You, you get data, you write data. Mutation is a bit more obscure, and there are many different implementations of, of subscription. AppSync fully supports subscription as well. Uh, so the idea of subscription is uh, to tell the server, hey, guy, let me know when something is changing on the server side. And me, the client, I, want, I don't want to, 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 to pull data. I don't want to connect every 10 seconds to say, hey, uh, is something changed? Hey, does something change? Hello, do you have any? No. We want to just continue to do whatever we are doing and let the server call us whenever uh, uh, something, something will, will happen. That's what we call the Hollywood principle. Maybe you heard about that. It's a, don't call me, I will call you when, when, when something happens. Um, <coughs> So we do support subscription. Uh, it's embedded inside the SDK. Uh, we are using a queuing mechanism, a publish and subscribe mechanism under the scene called MQTT. It's a fantastic piece of software from IBM. Uh, very lightweight, very efficient in terms of network consumption and in terms of, of battery. Uh, we have an MQTT client embedded into our SDK and the AppSync server on the server side as an MQTT server. So you can subscribe to a channel, subscribe to a, a, um, um, an event and get notified I will show you that a bit later in the demo. Should we stop using REST? <laughs> Probably not. Uh, I think there are different use cases. REST is still good. REST, first, it's there since many years, like 10 years almost. Um, REST is really good for caching, anything that can be cached for a period of time. And REST is really good to leverage the HTTP verb and the HTTP uh, semantic to access data with the header, the cache control header, for example, that lets you specify if you want to get fresh data or if you want to get an update. Uh, <laughs> sorry. REST is really good as well. 
uh, for for hi um, hyperlinks, uh, if your reply contains link to other resource, you can just give the link to these other resource in, in your reply, and the client can parse the reply and just follow the links to get more details and make more more HTTP call. REST is also good for some resource. Um, typical example at Amazon is uh, S3, the, the object storage uh, service. If you want to store object, retrieve object, REST has a lot of sense uh, there. GraphQL is more on driven by the client side, driven by, the, by the, the front end developer, the web developer, or the mobile application developer, and for anything which is uh, based on data or reliant on data query driven, cl uh, client driven uh, development. So we have two concepts in, in AppSync. Uh, the first one is concept of data source, uh, is where AppSync will fetch your data. Um, so you have the Client application call, uh, calling AppSync, calling a specific query or a specific mutation, and you need to configure AppSync to tell it where it needs to fetch the data. Out of the box, we support uh, Amazon Elasticsearch service, which is an in-memory cache. Maybe you know Redis or Memcache. It's a managed serverless version of uh, Redis or Memcache you choose. We do support uh, and we do connect to Amazon DynamoDB. DynamoDB is a serverless NoSQL database, a managed database. I will show you the console briefly for, for the demo. The idea of DynamoDB is that you create a table, you give us the structure of the table, just the primary key and, and the index, and we scale the table for you. So it's a, it, it's, a, it's a table that can contain just a few bytes of data or terabytes of data, depending on your usage, but we scale the infrastructure for you on, on the back end, and you don't have to take care about, about that. Um, any REST endpoint, if you have existing REST endpoint, and we are going to do that uh, during the demo, we can, we can connect to uh, existing REST uh, endpoint. And uh, there is that thing there called AWS Lambda. So what is AWS Lambda? Lambda is another service from AWS that allows you to run code in the cloud. If you want to run a piece of code in the cloud, you know that today your uh, traditional way of doing is to start a virtual machine, install Linux or Windows. If it is Java code, you need to install the Java runtime, you need to install a front end like Nginx, Apache, or Tomcat, whatever. You need to deploy that. And then once it's up there and running, you need to scale that because if you have a million requests per day, what are you going to do? You need multiple instances. You need a load balancer in front of that. You need to have a monitoring, alarming to collect the logs, to restart the server. Once again, that's a lot of things to do just to run a piece of code in, in the cloud. So the promise of Lambda is that we do take care of that undifferentiated heavy lifting. We do take care of the plumbery of the infrastructure. You just give us the code, and we do all the stuff I explained before. <laughs> we run the machines for you, the load balancer, the scalability, the, 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 load balan the, the load balancing, the high availability. We run that for you. So with Lambda, you just provide us a piece of code. We do support Java, Python, Node.js, Ruby since last week, uh, Go, C Sharp, and probably a few others that I, I forgot. And uh, we have a runtime API that allows you to run any programming language as well. Uh, since last week, you can run, uh, I saw a demo in C++, I saw a demo in COBOL, and in Swift. Uh, so you really can run anything now on, on Lambda. That's cool, running COBOL in a Lambda function. Um, <laughs> So AppSync can call a Lambda function, and from there it's your code. So if you have an API to call something else, a legacy API, something really weird or exotic, you can code that from the Lambda function back to whatever, a relational database or whatever you need to uh, access data. The other concept of um, GraphQL in general and applied to AppSync are resolver. So going to fetch data is great, and it's great to be able to access DynamoDB or to access Lambda, but most of the time you need some kind of mapping between the JSON structure you receive from the client and the JSON structure you need to pass to the backend. So on your way from the client to the backend, you need to apply some transformation to the JSON. And the same is true on the other side. When you receive the answer back from the backend, the REST API, DynamoDB, you need to transform that most of the time before delivering that JSON back to the client. So a resolver is just a mapping between two JSON formats. You receive a JSON format on one side, you apply a transformation, and you generate another uh, JSON format on the, on the reply side. How do we do that? We call that a template, and it's not really coding, it's more like a, a scripting, uh, 
uh, template. Uh, we are using Apache Velocity uh, engine, which is a templating engine, which is quite popular in the developer community. And you just write a template to map from JSON to JSON and to give us uh, a specific example. Okay, I think I talk a lot about AppSync, what it is. So let's make it real so that you can see uh, how it works. And let's create a, a very small Hello World example first in uh, the AppSync uh, developer console. If I manage to find my mouse. Hello, where are you? You are there. Okay. Um, is it large enough for you that are in, in, in the back? Can you see? No? Let's increase that a bit. So this is the AWS AppSync uh, console. I'm, I'm connected to AWS on, on my, uh, under my name in the Frankfurt uh, region right now, and let's create an API. I can create the API from a result built from scratch or importing an existing DynamoDB table. There is also a couple of sample projects that you can find on GitHub an event management application, a chat app, uh, app fully um, on GitHub, you will find the clients for that. So these are ready to use application if you want to see how it works. Let's start with a wizard uh, and say, let's um, do a GraphQL meetup API to find the dates of uh, upcoming GraphQL meetup in, in any specific city. My model here will be super simple. I will just have an ID and a title for the meetup. But in real life, you would have a date, uh, organizer, location, and and stuff like that. So let's just create this, and um, let's keep the default name for that uh, application. So the wizard now it's creating a, a, a database for me. It's creating a table to, to back up this data. It's using uh, DynamoDB for that. So it's creating a DynamoDB table, creating the data source, creating the resolver, and I can start and test the API right now. On the left side, you have the schema, and you can see the schema that has been created. There is a couple of uh, mutation, create GraphQL meetup, update, delete, um, the get, and the list. So the get is getting one specific, the list is returning a list of um, uh, GraphQL uh, meetups, and it has some pagination by default, so you can uh, limit your list and, and paginate through uh, multiple results. Um, in the schema, you can see also the resolver, and in that case, uh, the, the resolver are going to to map to a DynamoDB. Um, so basically what we do here, that's the resolver to go to DynamoDB. We say we are going to do a scan operation. That's the name of the, the API on DynamoDB to scan data with a couple of, of filter for the pagination, and, and that's it. So like to get the next 10 results starting from, from there. And the reply is even easier because we take the JSON back from DynamoDB and we pass that back directly to, to uh, GraphQL AppSync. Um, so there is no transformation there. We just take one JSON and, and gener generate the other one. <laughs> Queries can be um, prepared. There is a create GraphQL uh, meetup here that takes a parameter. I can edit the parameter. Uh, let's say GraphQL meetup Paris. Let's execute that uh, GraphQL meetup, and um, this is the data that I receive in return. So you are not obliged to believe me. Uh, we can go to the DynamoDB console and see the list of tables that I have here in uh, DynamoDB. You see that there is one table that has been created for me, GraphQL meetup table. And if I look at the items in this table, I have a, a GraphQL meetup Paris that has been um, created for me. And of course, you can create more queries and, and test your, your query. For example, let's create a list uh, query. Oops, query list meetups. Um, list GraphQL meetups, and I want to get the Mm, oh, yeah. Uh, list GraphQL meetups. I need to have the pagination. So let's say I just want to have 10. And that will return me um, items. And in items, hmm, I should have here a title and uh, be able to run the query directly from here. I will do that on, on the other API um, uh, just after. But I guess it's items. Mm. Yeah, they, they, they create intermediate type. I will, I will not do that, but you get the idea. So you can create an API very quickly. Uh, you can generate code for the, the client side. I will show you that as well. And that's the basic of the, of, the, of the console. You have the schema, 
you have the data source, you have the queries, and a couple of additional settings where you can configure the authentication, for example, the name or the logging of uh, the API. So that's apps, hello world for uh, AppSync. Works. What about real life? Um, and how do you prototype API uh, in, in real life today? Are you using static data, dynamic data? Are you going to, to your backend directly? Are you going to mock your data or not? There are different uh, uh, strategies. So for the rest of this talk, let's pretend we are working for a company called Elastilodge. It's a chain of hotel. And uh, that company has a very old desktop application with a REST API that has been built by another team years ago. And they want to modernize uh, the, the look and feel of, of that application. They, want, they hire an agency that will create a super nice looking mobile application for iOS and for Android. And my task in the next uh, 40 something minutes uh, is to actually, or 30 minutes, is to actually prepare the API uh, to, to create that, that prototype of a new mobile application for uh, LST Lodge. Uh, and of course, I need to do that on top of my regular job. So uh, I need something quick, efficient, and no infrastructure to manage. This is the existing REST API of uh, LST Lodge. It returns a lot of data about an hotel. You can query uh, the list of hotel properties they have across the world. If you query by ID, it will return you the hotel name, the description, the image, the address, the manager, and blah, 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 the amenities, picture of the hotel and uh, tons of, of stuff. So let's look at the first screen of our uh, mobile application, which would be the hotel detail. This is the mock-up that has been done by the agency. And um, what data do we need to, to fill that mock-up? There is a picture there on the top. Uh, there is a map. There is the category of the hotel, the name, uh, the list of amenities. Um, do we have missing data? Yes, probably. Photo is not existing in, in the current API. But can we enable that with AppSync? without touching the existing API. So I want to reuse the existing API, but put a front end, a GraphQL front end in front of the, the REST API and consume the GraphQL API from, um, from the mobile application. So on the left side now, oh, sorry, right side, left for me. On your right side, you have the, the original data returned by the, the REST API, the long data with um, some, some fields that are unused. So the first job prototyping this would be to map uh, what we have on the mock-up and try to find corresp um, correspondence and try to find wh what data is available in the existing REST API that I can uh, reuse. And the good news is that most of the data we need to build that screen are available from the REST API. But there is too much. There is tons of stuff that we don't need that we are not going to use. So my first job <coughs> is to create a GraphQL API for that screen of hotel detail. So I will create a new API in AppSync, and I will um, create a new type called hotel that contains the data I need for my screen. Hotel ID, name, image, location, phone number, address, and maybe more. Uh, address is another type. Uh, phone number is another type. The rest are just IDs or... or or strings. I will also query, uh, create two queries, one of them to get the list of all the hotels available in, in my backend, and one to get the specific uh, details about an hotel. So the first one return an array of hotels, the second one will return just one hotel. So I have my data source, it's my existing REST API. I have my schema. Next step is to create the resolver. And the resolver is to map the JSON that I will pass or receive from the existing REST API to uh, the GraphQL uh, engine. So this is the resolver for the uh, question, for the request, that's the request mapping. And um, we know that the data source here is an HTTP REST, so I just need to specify what is the method, get, and what is the resource part, slash hotel, slash a specific hotel ID. Uh, I'm asking the API, uh, a content type application JSON, to be sure that uh, the REST API will return me the application JSON. On the reply part, when the API returns a, a response, this is my template. This is my velocity template to transform the data. I will first verify that the status code is 200, that everything goes well. If it's not going well, then I'm adding an error, and I'm just passing the body of the response as an error. Um, 
if it is good, I assume that all the rest is good. I take the JSON from my um, REST API and return that. The filtering at character level will be done by the GraphQL server at field level. So if I test that query, query, get hotel, hotel ID 3, I'm asking for name, location, image, and blah, 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 and I will receive a JSON, which is exactly the piece of JSON that I need. That's good for the server side. If I have that, I will show you that in the console in a minute, but if I have that, I have an API, I can pass that to a client application developer. Um, we can generate code, so we have a tool that will allow you to generate code for Java, Android, for um, uh, Swift or iOS for, uh, um, sorry, Swift or Objective-C for iOS, or JavaScript for your web application, so that you don't even have to, to create the data structure in your code or um, interact with the, the, the AppSync low-level API. So the SDK allows you to write code like that. First, you need to initialize an AppSync client. This is an example of code in Swift for iOS, but it's very similar in Kotlin, in Java, or in JavaScript. First, you need to create um, a configuration for your app that basically the configuration will read a JSON file that tells where is the AppSync server, what is the credentials to access that, that AppSync server. So you create an AppSync configuration object, you pass that AppSync configuration object to the AppSync client, and then you have that object, AppSync client, which is ready to use. And to use it, it's pretty easy, you just call fetch to fetch data, and you specify what type of query you want. Here it's a get hotel query with the hotel ID, and you pass a callback, you pass a function, uh, that will be called whenever the, 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 the result will be available, because this is asynchronous, of course, we are not blocking uh, during the call of that. So whenever there will be data available or an error, uh, that function that receives the result and an error will, will start. First you check if it is not an error, if it is not an error, you use the data. So it's pretty basic, two lines of code to initialize the client, one line of code to make the query, and then do something with, with, with the data. So let's have a look how it works uh, in, in real life, uh, going back to my uh, AppSync uh, console. I need to recover my mouse, okay. Um, so I have the, the API deployed in another region, let's switch to Ireland, and I have the Elastilog API. You can see from the schema that it's roughly exactly what I, I said in, in the, on the slide. There is a type hotel, there is a, a list hotel, and get hotel reservation will come at a later, at a later stage. Um, I have a data source here, um, the, the existing REST API, HTTP API, and this is the address of the data source. We can, we can test it to see if it works. Uh, let's close that one and go to prod hotels. And of course, it's not hotels like that, it's hotel like this. It should retrieve me the list of hotel. I have a nice plugin here that uh, organize the JSON for me, I can specific, uh, specify a, um, a specific hotel and retrieve that. So that's my existing REST API. So I have the schema, I have the data source, and I have the, the, the resolver, uh, which are the same as the one on the slide. I'm going to prod hotels, and uh, whatever result I receive, I do some um, JSON mapping between one data structure and, and the other data structure. And I can test that, so I can uh, ask for uh, um, get uh, all the hotels and just retrieve that. So once again, I can create the query here, list hotels, uh, you have uh, code completion in the, in the, in the editor, so you don't need to remember all the, all the names, and then you specify what you want, so hotel ID, uh, phone number, and we can test that query again with list hotel, and now we have the hotel ID and the phone number uh, there. So that's all for the API. The API is ready to use. Now I can pass that to um, a client. I will not show you the code again, but I have um, uh, the code running here on, uh, on Xcode, and I have a, an app. Oops, that's not the right app. <laughs> that's another demo. Uh, let's move to 
Elastiloge. Maybe I should stop that app first, go to Elastiloge and start the app. And uh, okay, I'm using placeholder for the for the graphic. I'm not a graphic designer, so I apologize for that. But basically, it fetch the data from from the API and display that in the mobile application with the code I show you on the slide. So very easily, I can consume an existing REST API and I can repackage it, refactor it as a GraphQL um, application. Next requirement for that mobile application is to handle reservation, uh, which for which we don't have an API, we have a legacy system for that, um, but I need to propose something to be able to, to add support for reservation. So I would like to have a second screen in my application that lists all my upcoming reservation at different hotels and maybe be able to call the hotel or to, to, to show the details to know uh, where to go there. The challenge here is to integrate with a legacy reservation system that I do not control. Uh, how can I do that very, very, very quickly? Maybe delegate that part of the work to another team, a back-end team, an infrastructure team, while I can focus just on the API. So the solution here is to propose an API, GraphQL base, I will introduce a new type in my schema, a reservation that has a confirmation number. It's for a specific hotel, specific guest, between two dates at a specific price. Then I will uh, make uh, my CRUD operation, so three new types of, of operation, a query to retrieve a specific reservation for a guest, create a reservation, or delete a reservation. And as backend here, I will propose to use DynamoDB, the database. Uh, that will be like a landing area for my data, and I will develop something after to integrate with the rest of the, of the legacy. Integrating with Dyna DynamoDB is super easy. You just need to write the resolver to pass the data to uh, DynamoDB and the resolver to retrieve the data from DynamoDB. In that case, um, to list all the, the reservation for a specific customer, I need to write a DynamoDB JSON uh, command to say, hey, scan your table and retrieve me all the items that are after today and that are for this specific user ID. So how do you do that with uh, DynamoDB? You specify a query, that's the name of the operation, that has um, an, um, a condition, an expression which is guest ID equal this and star date is bigger than this. And then you define what is this. <laughs> My guest ID is coming from uh, the identity, uh, whoever call that, um, that API. And the star date is uh, today's string, which is uh, compute here as a, as a global variable. So it's basically uh, right, right now. And the return is even easier because we take whatever is produced by <laughs> DynamoDB and we put that back at the API. So it is to JSON context result uh, item. Then I pass that, <coughs> I pass that to my um, iOS um, agency, my mobile application agency that will prototype the iOS, the Android app. And uh, what they have to do is to run the query, guest reservation, get the details. Maybe they get, get the detail for the hotel, like the hotel ID, the name, the image, uh, and things like that. So that's a very efficient way to add a new API on top of a database. You create a table in DynamoDB, you read and write from DynamoDB. In real life, it will be a bit more complicated than that, because in real life, I probably have a legacy reservation system, something running on a mainframe, COBOL again. Uh, you need to interact with MQ or Kik or whatever uh, exotic way you have to interact with, with that. So the architecture here would be wh what happens after the data after we are in DynamoDB. Let's pretend we arrive on DynamoDB, I have my reservation. How can I move that to another system? Once again, the answer is Lambda. Lambda is a function uh, that you need to write, it's, it, it will act as a trigger for DynamoDB. So you can configure DynamoDB to, to start a piece of code whenever something is changing on your table. I guess you are all familiar with, with uh, trigger in relational database. It's the exact same idea. You create a Lambda function, and that Lambda function will be triggered whenever you insert, update, or delete content in your, your database. That Lambda function does the magic to called the legacy system, depending on your legacy system API. 
And whenever the legacy system is ready, you can trigger a mutation from a Lambda function. So I will tell, uh, I will tell uh, AppSync that, hey, the confirmation, the, the reservation is confirmed. And this is the confirmation ID coming back from, from my legacy. You can trigger programmatically a mutation. So the trigger of a mutation is not necessarily the client API or the client application. It might happen on the server side as well to notify your client that something changed on your backend. So, how do you want to get that event back to your mobile application? It would be great if the mobile application, as soon as the trigger is received, say, hey, the, conf the confirmation is there and your booking is, is confirmed. The answer is to go through subscription. Subscription is something the client side is doing, the mobile application will do to say, to AppSync, say, hey, please, inform me when something happened on that subject. And that subject here, it's a create reservation event. That's the name of, of my event. And I don't want to receive all creative, create event reservation. I only want to receive the one for me, for the user currently using the mobile application. I don't want to receive your create event reservation in my mobile application. So you can filter on a specific ID. In that case, I will uh, filter on the guest ID. Uh, one, it's the one I'm using on that example. So that's another GraphQL code that um, the client application developer needs to do to start the reservation. How do you do that at code level? Once again, it's iOS uh, Swift, very similar in Kotlin, in Java, or in JavaScript. You create your create reservation event subscription. So you create a subscription object passing the guest ID, uh, currently user, the, the, the currently authenticated user. You create a subscription by calling the AppSync client and then subscribe to that specific subscription that you create before. And you also pass a callback, a function that will be called when something happens with result transaction error. When you when your function is called back, first you check for an error, of course. I removed that code just here to, to fit all the code on the slide. Then you update the cache. Remember, in AppSync, you have a cache. So if something happened on the server, it's great to update the local cache so that subsequent queries will fetch the data from the cache. So next step is to update the cache. And once the cache is updated, then you do whatever you want with the data. You consume the data. You display them on uh, the, on the uh, user interface. How much time do you have? 13 minutes, perfect. So let's see how it works uh, in real life. Switching back to, <laughs> waiting for my mouse to be unlocked. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I have a query here, reservation, re sorry, reservation subscription for guest ID one. This is here. Um, and I have a database. Um, not in that region, I have a database here with all my uh, reservation. Currently, I have only one reservation. And to prove that I have only one reservation, if I go on, my, on the reservation tab of, on, on my mobile, I can see one reservation. Again, a placeholder for the image and the name of the hotel. It was hotel number three and a confirmation number um, there. So the first thing you want to test is to test inside the console. I don't want to start to write code um, and, and mobile application. I want to test in the console. Um, so for that, I will open two window, identical window on the queries tab. And on this one, I will execute the reservation subscription. And if you can see, it starts listening to events uh, on, on, my, on my reservation. I can stop that at any time. So with the other one, I will create a reservation. Let's create a reservation. Create reservation. Maybe I should do that like this. And take this as well. Can I zoom this uh, window, physical size? Uh, that's a bit better. Hmm. Did I call that already? No. <laughs> uh, let's restart this, this app uh, a second because I would like to start with an empty screen. It will be, it will be more, more visual in, in, the, in the demo. Yeah, so, so let's empty my table, restart the app, Elastilodge. Lodge. 
and go here, I have no reservation. <laughs> so let's go back to my app sync console and um, let's try to create a reservation. Uh, create reservation. Dink. Now I create a reservation and you can see that immediately here the mobile app has been, has been updated. And my other tab, which was listening on event, is also updated. So you can test your subscription directly from the AppSync console without having a client app, or you can just subscribe to event in your, in your uh, client app and, uh, and, and, and test from a, from a real application, maybe a mobile application. Let's create another reservation for another uh, guest, let's say guest two. And this one will not appear. So create reservation, hotel ID three, guest ID two. This one will not appear here because I'm just listening for the, 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 the updates that are on, on my user ID. So let's create another one for another hotel and maybe a different date, like in, in March, this one. And uh, create reservation and it appears there for a different hotel. So it's not the same name and a different dates as well. This one is in March, this one is in, is in February. So subscription is a very powerful way to, to be informed about something that happens on, on the server side and to keep track and keep your GUI and your cache uh, updated in real time. And you can have millions of clients connected to the same subscription. We do manage the server side part of the sub subscription for you. Let's make a last change in our API before uh, to, to wrap up. The um, designer team says, hey, it would be great to have a rate uh, in, the, in the first price per night. And of course, that price is changing based on tons of, of criteria. And of course, you have a whole team doing, doing uh, rate calculation. And they are using machine learning, artificial intelligence to compute the best price depending on existing bookings, depending on the weather, depending on, I don't know, tons of different parameters. So I will not go uh, through machine learning today. We can have another talk another day to, to show you how to do that on AWS. But let's pretend I have a REST API that fetch me uh, a rate for a specific hotel and a, a specific uh, date. If I want to add that, uh, it's what I'm really going to do is to change my hotel schema to add a rate value. And that rate value will come from a different source. I will have two data sources on the back end. The REST API, the legacy one that gives me the picture the name, the address, and what I want to do is to call a second REST API, a second data source, to, 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 to get additional information. So you can do that through a resolver at field level. So far, I show you the, the resolver for a type like hotel or reservation, but in a given type like hotel, one specific type one specific field, sorry, can have a specific resolver. So one field from your hotel type can come from a totally different backend uh, than the rest. Um, I will show you that in the console in a second. But if I want to, to make that change, I need to add a rate field on my hotel type. I define the rate as an hotel ID, a rate, a currency, and a date. And then I will define on the rate field there, I will specify um, a very specific resolver just for that field that will apply. So there is a first resolver that will create the hotel. And for that specific field, it's a second resolver. And the resolver is there on the right side. It's just a call to another uh, REST API, rd slash rates, with a specific hotel ID. And it's a, it's a get. In reality, you probably need to pass the date as well and, and some, some, some other parameter. <coughs> as a front-end developer, if I want to benefit from that, in my query for get hotel, my only duty here is to add a rate with currency and rate uh, component. And in the JSON response, I will receive a current rate and, and um, the price. Um, I can show you how it works in the console. So if I go back to the schema, I have my hotel type with rate of type rate, exactly like we show on the slide. And let's have a look at the resolver, because this is where uh, the, 
the interesting piece is happening. Um, so my hotel type is here. It has no specific resolver attached to none of the field because so far the resolver has been attached to the operation, to list, guest, or um, create or delete. But here I'm adding a resolver attached to one specific field. And that's the resolver that will fetch the data from my existing rate API and produce a JSON that I can consume. Actually, I'm just verifying if it is a success or not. If it is not success, returning an error. If it is success, no mapping, just passing the content straight from the back end to here. And the end result, maybe you saw it already in the app, it's there. You have the rating with the currency and uh, the, the price there. So we have five minutes to wrap up. <laughs> what did we do? <laughs> what did I do there? In half an hour in front of you, I show you how you can prototype a new API using GraphQL and AppSync. I show you how to consume existing REST API and do some transformation of data between the, the data returned by the REST API uh, to the data returned by uh, the, the mobile application. I show you how to incorporate new features like the reservation using a DynamoDB table. Of course, I didn't do the back-end integration part. That's not the subject of this talk. But very quickly, expose a CRUD operation on a, on a database. Um, and I show you also how you can subscribe um, from a client point of view to change that happen in the back-end. And there are two use cases for that. One of them is another user changing the data. Or the use case I show you today is um, there is something asynchronous happening on the data, like you have a legacy system that takes a bit of time to generate the new data and to call you back so that you can refresh the GUI whenever uh, the change has been processed by, by the back end. And we did that in three phases. First phase, just integrate the REST API. Second phase, introduce a new um, database, database uh, API for the reservation. And then integrate a machine learning system, uh, introducing a new requirement. And we did all that without coding a single line of code on the server side. Of course, there is a lot of code on the client side that I, I did beforehand. Um, but we, I, I didn't really code anything on the server side. If we can consider that a velocity template, a template is not really coding, it's just an if and a couple of, of mapping between JSON attribute, that's, that's not really uh, coding. Of course, there are tons of stuff we can do more with that app. Uh, if you want to continue, I will show you the, where is the, the source code of, of, of that app. You can add weather information, um, you can search by location, you can add uh, geolocalization, geolocalization search, or, or ton of stuff. So uh, we are planning to, to improve that, that demo app uh, a bit more in the future. <coughs> One important component I didn't mention, I would, really would like to mention before the end, is uh, Amplify. Amplify is a tool chain for, for developers, so it's a, a command line tool that you can install, and that will help you to manage your GraphQL API on the client side. So Amplify is a tool that will connect to your AWS account and keep track of the different resources you have on your account, like an S3 bucket or a GraphQL AppSync uh, API. But it will do more than that. It will also allow you to generate code. Remember I told you and I show you iOS Swift code. Um, the, the Swift code that I wrote was using some predefined type like hotel or reservation. I didn't define in, in Swift the concept of an hotel or reservation. This code has been generated for me based on my GraphQL schema by Amplify. Um, the way it works uh, is documented on the AppSync homepage when you you, you start the, the console. Oops, when you start the console, you take an API. You have first step is to define the schema. Second step is to run a query. And then oops, third step is to integrate with your apps. And depending on your app, JavaScript for web application, Android or iOS, we give you the exact instruction you need to do to integrate client-side code inside your app. So first you need to install the Amplify uh, command line. It's an OGS tool. Init to link with your account. And then the magic is here. Add code gen, and you give the API ID. It will generate a Swift class. It will generate uh, a GraphQL uh, JSON file so that you can easily integrate that inside your uh, Android, 
um, iOS or web application without writing a single line of code. Of course, to make the calls, to, then you need to write code. But the data structure of your schema, the concept of queries, of reservation, everything, of, um, of subscription, sorry, um, is, is generated automatically for, for you. All the code that I show, um, at least for the server side, is available on, on GitHub. Uh, it's one of my colleagues that, that wrote the, the code for the back end. I wrote the code for the front end for the iOS app, and we are going to include that into that, that repo. So if you go to his personal repo, uh, jcan117, um, you, will, you will have uh, the, the full uh, source code for the server side. No code yet for the client side, but uh, we are working at adding that very, very, very soon. So I'm afraid I'm a bit late to take any uh, q and um, I'm just at the end of my time slot, but I will stay here, and I will be happy to talk to you if you have any question uh, about AppSync or AWS in general. Thank you for being here, and thank you for listening to me. <laughs>